I uh, wanted to welcome those who are, are watching to the Beaver Creek, Creek uh, a Book Club. Uh, we've met uh, for three years here, which means we've gone through about 30 books, or 31 books I think we may. But at the beginning of the year, we, we pick several books and then we read them every month. And we get together at the end of the month and we talk about the book and how it affected us, what we got out of it, what uh, it might have meant to us or what it might have changed about us or our way of thinking. So I guess to get the ball rolling, we agreed at our last meeting that it was a good idea to uh, start off with our one word. We had such a good time last time, Corey. That was such a great idea you and Steve uh, implemented. So. Uh, say the, bird, the book was kind of uh, educational. Hmm. Educational? So um, it did educate myself and maybe anybody that read it as to the different uh, lifestyles or the different perceptions that a white person would have compared to a native. It would have educated me that way. I don't know if that's the way you're going with it. But. Yeah, that's pretty much the way I was going with it. All right. Hmm. Uh, my word would be hope. Hope. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a great word and it sort of speaks to, uh, it speaks to the the whole fabric of this of this book, and throughout his his journey, shall I say, he uh, was torn in so many many ways. But uh, he it was a story of of hope, a story of uh, inspiration, uh, and he never never lost uh, lost lost touch of that that feeling of of hope. Bang on! That's exactly what I was. Come on. <laughs> 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 I've worked uh, as an educator for quite a while. My background's in social work, and so some of the work that I've done over the years has been with, uh, you know, with men. And uh, some of the men that I've worked with uh, have, uh, you know, have had uh, impulse control problems and stuff. I can tell you, every single session that we've had in here, these guys have been incredibly respectful of each other. Determination. <laughs> Huh. Well, that takes away my word. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, <about. laughs> uh, it can be your word. Yeah, it could be in many ways. I think perhaps a determination to get out of, off the reservation and go against everything that's gone on in past generations by actually going to a different school and by deciding to break that cycle. As, as I think Bert mentioned that. So. He's determined to do that and determined to do something successful with his life. Yeah, so. yeah I think, you know, when you, you read at the beginning, he, he didn't give himself much of a chance. You kind of thought, how is this guy going to do this? And, uh, you know, when he did go out, he was determined to, mm -hmm. to make it work. Somehow he, made, he found a way. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, for one, it forces me to read stuff I usually wouldn't read. And then I think it connects guys together through the stories, but it also takes the guys a little bit away from the prison atmosphere. So it puts your mind elsewhere in a positive atmosphere and it gives guys something to look forward to. So you got new books coming in, you get to read them, you get to meet together, so it's all little little things of hope. Keep your time going and hopefully get out with a positive attitude, right? Like all through <coughs> this book, I did see a series of, of examples where uh, this person could be, remain hopeful and find joy in his life um, as a result of the conflict he was going through. And, and at, at the very end, completely redefined himself on 217, where before he said he was uh, Spokane Indian, and then he redefined himself as uh, being part of the tribe of cartoonists or teenage mm -hmm. boys, the small town kids of poverty. So he, just, he redefined himself and saw him as, 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 a, as a combination of several things and not just one stereotype, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. right, I think also there's a, if this book is a young adult novel, and I think one of the messages that may be geared to them in connection with hope as well is that perhaps through this novel he's letting young adults know that if you don't put yourself out there you're not going to achieve what you want to achieve. So sometimes you have to go through the pains of it and really put yourself out there like he did. He went to what school. Right? He put himself way out there. He decided to <clears throat> try out for the basketball team. He didn't have to try out. He thought they were all all-stars and he didn't have a chance. But he made it on because he had so much determination. And perhaps that's the same thing with that 
our expectations or how we perceive things. He perceived them to be perhaps snobbish or rich kids that wouldn't want nothing to do with them, but they embraced them. They cared for him. They drove him home. Mm -hmm. Even when he, he was too embarrassed to mention how poor he was, and they brought it up to him, and he still kind of lied until they <laughs> yeah. asked yeah. him again, yeah. he agreed. Well, even then, they didn't really care that he was poor. They actually cared about helping him out. And it kind of breaks that barrier that if you don't put yourself out there, you're not going to break that barrier. So I think that's a great message for young adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he finally realized that he wasn't stupid, you know, he mm -hmm. was among the smarter kids, yeah. you know. When guys come in here, it's not about bringing an attitude towards anybody or not to be dominant towards one another, but it's exactly that, the respect of other people's ideas and boundaries and to accept that we're all a little different and we all see things a little different. But I found in every chapter, every chapter, maybe I missed one or maybe I just got through one too quick, but in every chapter addressed the insanity of the world. Mm -hmm. A whole town of white people living in a res trying to secede. Yeah. And he can he barely just get to school in a white school that's just off the res. Mm -hmm. Which has an Indian mascot. Which has an Indian mascot. <laughs> yeah. You know, every chapter had, and, and I enjoyed that. Very much so, and I enjoyed the cartoons. It was, I, I thought it was a very fun read. I say the insanity and the, the, the fact that we, 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 we gloss over in our societies things like this. We don't pay attention to it as much as we should. Well, who am I to talk? I spent 40 freaking years in prison, right? Well, it, my life hasn't been much, but I, I get pretty warped things out of the books. And to hear other people's opinions of it is very rewarding to me. It, it helps me learn. I think the art was sort of a way of, of giving us a, a glimpse into who he was as well, right? It was, he, I mean, he hit on these incredible issues, right, in a very, very powerful way. But he wasn't an angry guy, right? It didn't, he didn't get a sense, and yet he certainly had every right to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... It doesn't leave a feeling of despair. It, it, no, it, it didn't. It, it didn't. No. His, his greatest feeling of despair, I think, was when he lost his dog. Did, you, did that not get to you guys? What a wonderful step, step. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some of the yeah. poverty doesn't give you strength or teach you lessons about perseverance. No, poverty only teaches you how to be poor. That was when Oscar's dog was just about to be shot. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then he says at the end of the chapter, I believe it only costs two cents for a bullet. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but so I, I, I found that very touching. Yeah. I mean, you talk right. about alcohol. Probably. We've probably seen 50 different faces come through this room. And they've all added plenty to the discussions, and I remember them. Uh, I try to remember them all, fi all fondly, even the ones who would come in and say, on a scale of one to ten, give us a number. And we would think, like, well, I don't know if this is the way we want to go tonight, you know? Uh, and you know what I will say? We were giving threes and fours to a lot of the books at first. And being a little rigid in our criticism. And now, three years later, we wouldn't think of rating a book on a scale of one to 10. The book is almost guaranteed to be a seven or eight after we discuss it with each other. Because you, you hear so many different points of view and you want to almost reread it again sometimes. Like this one, I'll read it again. Yeah. But you know, I, I started thinking about the dysfunctionality um, no family is completely dysfunctional, and no society is completely functional. Mm. But the thing is, you know, at basketball games, my mom and dad never came to one of my basketball games. They made it to his basketball mm. games. Mm. They were in the stand. They couldn't sit together right. because of the excitement factor. But for all the shortcomings that his family had, and like the empty refrigerator, his parents were there for him yeah. in many ways that the white fathers... Yeah. That reared in, in that affluent society yeah. weren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you're working with certain population, you, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the concept is, or the, the notion might be, uh, and I think it's a stereotypical notion, oh, these people are just snowing you, they're just acting it out, you know. Um, and and maybe, maybe one time that could happen. But um, you, you can't fool people 24 times or the number of times that we've met. And so, uh, you know, this is, 
legitimate, honest uh, expressions that uh, that these men are contributing to the discussion. Yeah, on page 189 there, with dealing with exactly what you're saying with the uh, with their parents there. Yeah, my daddy was an undependable drunk, but he never missed any of my organized games, concerts, plays, or picnics. He may not have loved me perfectly, but he loved me as well as he could. And I thought that was uh, very, that was like well written. And pertinent to what you're saying. It gives me a reason to commit to something. And I, in the past, I've had trouble committing. And this, this really inspires me to the point where I will commit myself to two or three days of serious thinking about an author's presentation of ideas and the world, the universe, because there's been so many different topics that it really it just, it just really makes me tick. Uh, I, can't, I can't express how much I love the book club. That's, that's how I'll end it.